Okay, here's a little bit more of the Akale Violin Concerto as requested initially by That Nerdy Girl. And this is a scan that, that she sent to me. Um, and I'm going to just play a little bit for you and then talk about it afterwards. I'm going to try to get through as much as I can. I will have, probably have to stop if I go past page two. I've got page one here, page two here, and then I'll have to turn the pages, so I'll probably stop the camera in between. So here we go. My Rendition by Ben Chan. first read. Um, <clears throat> well, second read, I should say, because I did play this once before I recorded. Let's go back and talk about then the second page, as well as this third page, if I can go and find out where I am. Give me one second. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about then what we've what we just played. The beginning, go ahead and look at the other video that I made of Accolade's Violin Concerto, uh, but this second part, let's start from the bottom of the first page, which happens to be where it goes. Um, it has this kind of leading up to... Right here. Okay, so that whole thing there, this whole passage, needs to feel like there's some continuity between two separate pieces. These pieces being, for instance, that's the first piece, second piece, and then first piece again, so, um, and then the second piece, of course. So you see how I'm doing it? I'm actually weaving it so that the end of the first piece is the beginning of the second piece. So. Uh, it, that's the first piece, but also 
is the second piece, and therefore the, the note that's shared between the first and the second pieces is the D. End of the first. Also is the beginning of the second, so. Same thing with this E. And the C. D. B. C. Okay, so, and if you do it that way, if you think of it in terms of two pieces that are overlapped by one note. So the, the very first one, the D, is overlapped. The second one, uh, the E is overlapped. The third one, the C is overlapped, and then the D is overlapped, and then the B is overlapped, and then the C is overlapped. So think of it that way, and that should help you to make it sound more co continuous. And then let's talk about... You may have noticed that I'm emphasizing every beat, the very first note of each beat. So, so I'm, you're hearing this. Well, I guess. So you're actually hearing the first note on each of these groups. And what that does is it brings out the melody of this passage, which there is a melody. It also gives you a chance to give direction to the musicality. So when I'm playing this, I'm not just going... That's boring. Very boring. Um, but if you play it... See how I'm leading it? I'm leading it from uh, the first note to all the way to the fifth note. See that? I'll do it one more time. Okay, and that way you give you, it gives some musicality, some uh, direction in, in the music. Uh, if you notice, I did a pretty big ritardando. And this goes along pretty much any of the pieces that were during this time, uh, the classical whole romantic period, uh, where you've got to give the audience a chance to catch up with you. And so if you're going... It, it's too manic. It's, it's like you're, you're switching gears way too fast. You've got to give it a chance to, to, to change and give, it, give the audience a chance to recognize that you're, you're going into a, a lyrical passage. So, and then here I'm taking a little bit of my time. It says con ex, ex, expressione. And so um, what I'm doing is I'm not just... A machine could do that, but a person can actually... And there's a difference between the melody and an ornament of the melody. For instance, this is melody. This is an ornament. And then back to melody. So don't do too much with that ornament. You don't want to do anything that's um, too romantic with that run. You see how it doesn't make sense if you do it that way? But it... So it's kind of in passing. It's kind of a passing tone or a passing phrase to get you from melody to melody. Um, and I think that's probably... we got another one that's... Uh... Okay, so that's a passing, uh, passing phrase that leads back to the recap of the melody. Okay, so very subtle musical points that I'm giving you to you, but um, they will really help your playing uh, to make it more musical. And then this whole little... I can't emphasize enough practicing this slow. Now, I just sight read this because I guess it, it uh, is very classical in nature, and so because I have perfect pitch, it probably is easy for me to tell what the notes are, are that are coming. But when I would practice this slowly, again, I'm emphasizing the bottom notes, or the, the first note of each bar, uh, beat. So in the first measure, I'm emphasizing every beat. Second measure, I'm emphasizing every other beat. So you hear. And then next measure. 
the third, the, or the, sec the third idea. And then again. And you can hear that when you listen to the, the phrase when it's played normally. And the second time you hear that, uh, this... Make sure you drop the dynamic. It's hard to hear on this camera, but make sure you just drop it down. Okay, and then, um, and then just broaden it. And there you have it. So that's page two.